Mega Mania was released by Activision on the Atari 2600 in 1982. It follows the tried and true vertical shooter formula of games like Space Invaders. In fact, the similarities are quite obvious. While Mega Mania was never in the running for most original game of the year, it did bring some portions of its own to the buffet. For example, the enemies you shoot down are not spaceships, aliens, satellites, or any of the other sci-fi related paraphernalia. Instead, make your way for hamburgers, cookies, bugs, bow ties, and space dice, among others. Whatever the hell space dice are. So what's the plot of this game? I mean, even the simplest of Atari 2600 games has at least some semblance of a plot, right? Well, in this case, it's simply, you're a ship that has to destroy a bunch of surreal bullshit or die. This parade of absurdity will draw closer to you with each horizontal pass, similar to the aforementioned Space Invaders, only these weird objects go off screen and come back around the other side. It causes you to instinctively shift around a little bit more. Unlike Space Invaders though, they don't increase in speed as they get closer, and when they get to the bottom, you can actually keep yourself between whatever hazards are still there and hope they pass back from the top of the screen again. Each wave has a different bizarro object, and each one will have a different descending pattern, which causes you to continuously adjust and keeps you on your toes. It's a pretty fast-paced game overall, and it gets to be quite difficult as it progresses. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of variations. You can only toggle the speed of your missiles and whether or not they're fixed shots or guided. Normally, I prefer fixed in these types of games, as I like my projectile to travel in its originally intended direction and not be affected by where I'm moving my gun. But in this game, the fixed shots only allow you to fire one missile at a time, while guided allows you to fire a few at a time. So in this case, I recommend the guided option. There's not a lot to be had as far as visuals go. I mean, the enemies do change up from stage to stage, and the fact that they're these wacky objects makes them unique. But it's just a plain-ass black screen, and even that doesn't change color from wave to wave like a lot of Atari games do. But the gameplay itself is still quite engaging. It's fast-paced, or at least it gets that way in later levels, and the controls are tight and smooth. It's not innovative in the least, but at the end of the day, it's a solid game overall. Pretty much everything you would expect from an Activision game from the time.